Okay. okay. As I said, do you want me to kick off? We're gonna start with some kick introduction. Off. We're gonna go down the line, you know, make it really nice and smooth. Uh, my name is Kayla Rogers and I am a cost partnership manager in the Southeast. Uh, and we're excited to kick things off with you all today. Awesome. My name is Kyle Stepp and I represent uh, our West area alongside Shelby and uh, Wes is best excited for our, uh, our West area programs that are here. Yes, as Kyle said, I'm Shelby. I'm based out of Portland, Oregon, and I'm excited to be here with you all for the established programs collaboration meeting. Hi, I am Michaela. I work with programs in the Northeast and I am from Dakota Thon, so if you're from Dakota Thon, shout out you. Um, and my pronouns are she, her, so. Awesome, and I'll round us out. I'm Amber Lindsay. I am a cause partnerships manager for the central area. So we're excited to be here with you today and kick off on our established programs collaboration call. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, before we learn a little bit more about y'all, um, we just kind of want to get into some meeting objectives. So point of this, this collaboration meeting is for you all to learn a little bit more um, about how you can leverage past challenges to set new goals and benchmarks, how you can um, develop tactics for identifying, recruiting, and retaining teams. We have some great new resources to, resources to share with you all about teams. And to learn best practices, around year-long engagement for planning success, successful events and activations. So a um, lot of great stuff in store for you all over the next two hours. If you wanna to go to the next slide. Um, as far as meeting norms, we hope you all be present for these two hours. It's only two hours. Um, and we hope if possible, your video will be turned on. That just allows us to see, see y'all's face and for you to meet each other and collaborate with each other. Um, we hope that you will participate in breakouts and discussions. There'll be a few breakout rooms. In all of them, you'll have a facilitator, but we hope that you will have your video on and participate in those. Please utilize the chat and raise hand feature if you have questions. Um, there'll be a question time at the end too, if, if, um, if you have ones that you want to get on video and unmute and ask. And then assume um, people's best intentions and own the impact of your own words and actions, regardless of the intent. So that's meeting norms. Okay. Oh, okay. So you all, um, if you haven't already, there's an awesome new feature on Zoom that allows you to annotate and it's a really, really fun. So most of you should see at the top of your screen, it says you are viewing Michaela's screen. There's a little um, next to that view options button. And if you click that, then there'll be um, the fourth one down says annotate. And if you click annotate, then you'll be able to on our next slide actually stamp where you're from. So again, you're viewing Michaela's screen, you're gonna click view options, scroll down, click annotate, and then click the stamp feature for our next activity. So tell us where you're from. Who's represented here today? Oh, people are stamping. Love it, someone did a line. Iowa, I'm going to Iowa for the first time this summer. Oh, DeAndre, hi DeAndre in Seattle. Oh, I just love this, it's so fun. South Carolina, we're all over the place. Lots of our Northeast folks. Nebraska, someone's up by from, Maddie, but hopefully you get down somewhere else. Maybe you're from Canada. More, more, more. There must be a limit on number of annotates that can be on a screen because it just cleared everyone. Come on in. Oh, Blair's in Colorado or Utah. There we go. Okay. Well, that was fun. Um, we have another one, so get ready. I think Michaela, you have to clear. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We're coming back, folks. Okay, now we just wanna know who you all are as people. So again, take that, do that annotate feature. You're viewing Michaela's screen, view options, annotate, let us know. iPhone users, no Android so far. No green texters. I get nervous with people that have green texts. Always early, dog person, no cat people, come on. 
We've got some presidents of DM here. Hot dogs are not sandwiches. I would agree with that statement. I'm really happy with the Coke versus Pepsi. I would say that's probably my number one. I love Coke over Pepsi. I was going to say the same thing, Shelby. I was like, there's only two people that are Pepsi fans. We got a good crew. Also, the clowns are scary. Okay, very scary happening right there. No freshmen. Okay, I guess that probably makes sense being on leadership. I still can't believe we have no Android users. Wow, gives me faith in, in all of you college students again. It makes me think of if we all had a group chat together, it would all just be blue. Yeah, it would be so wonderful. That's what everyone, that's what I wish for in life is group chats with blue that you can name. Okay, well, um, thank you all for letting us know um, where, where you're from, who you are as people. Thank you for being iPhone users. I'm just kidding, we love and accept everyone. Um, and gonna go to the next slide and I'm gonna pass it over to Amber to talk about goal setting. Awesome, thanks Shelby. Yeah, so today we wanted to start out by just talking about goals. It's a beautiful topic, it doesn't need to be scary and it can really set the perfect foundation for your year when you're just starting out, looking at summer, what do you wanna do this year? You all are amidst surviving a global pandemic. So now what? Um, you have the opportunity to really redefine your program. So you have the opportunity to look at what, what you've been in the past, whether it is one year of foundation or 31 years of foundation. What has your program been in the past and who do you want to be moving forward? Is this an opportunity for you to rebrand? Do you need a refreshed logo, a free refreshed name? Is it something that's going to stick on your campus better and grow your organization? Do you need to maybe explore some new organization partnerships? Are there potential opportunities there to find an organization that you haven't partnered with before? Perhaps getting out of Greek life or perhaps expanding within Greek life or looking at some of those orgs that have similar missions to you that you can grow together and really expand your reach on campus and be inclusive um, to a variety of different organizations. And Kyle will talk about that a little bit more later. This is also the perfect opportunity to reconnect with your mission and your vision. It's been a crazy year. People are looking for different ways to involve. And so how can your goals reconnect you to your core values and who you are as an organization at the start? But through all of that, through all of your goal setting, through everything that you're doing, you should consistently make sustainable and effective changes. And the best way to make changes that are going to ensure great ROI is to be strategic about it. And so thinking through how you can think beyond just that final total, we know that that is ultimately what everything culminates towards, but there should be goals along the way. You should have benchmarks along the way. And so thinking through what some of those benchmarks could be, how are you going to set that strategic goal of, we may not get back to where we were in 2019 or 2020 pre-pandemic but we can grow and we can be sustainable for the future. We can do that by getting more freshmen involved or getting that new student interest peaked from the start. You can look at organizations and make meaningful partnerships that are gonna be beneficial for everybody involved. You can engage your campus. How cool would it be to, be, to come back from the pandemic and go from 20% engagement on campus to 50% engagement on campus? and looking at how are you going to get there? What are the steps that you can take and the things that you can put in place for that? And retention, how can we get all of those dedicated, loyal individuals that were with us through the pandemic or prior to the pandemic and get them to come back? Show them what their impact means on your organization and on your local hospital. No matter what your goals are, it's okay to continue rebuilding. It's not healthy to just bounce back all the time. In some cases, maybe it will be, but not always. And so it's okay as you continue to rebuild. And we're gonna talk about that today and dive a little bit more into how you can rebuild. So I'll pass it off to Kyle. Awesome, thanks Amber. So if we think about recruitment, what is actually the purpose of recruitment? 
So we think about recruitment. If we want to have, you know, that final total, think about that final number at the end of the year is that substantial impact of fundraising for our local CMN hospital. We see a room full of really passionate students on your campus at your main event. It all starts with recruitment. So we all know that we want to have as many students as we possibly can to be advocates and ambassadors for our program. So we think about the goal of recruitment is really to build a community of ambassadors and advocates and fundraisers for your local CMN hospital and not event attendees. So many of you have probably looked through Donor Drive and you wonder why do we have so many zero dollar fundraisers or why don't we have a lot of participants attending our event? It really starts with that initial process of setting those clear expectations and those resources for a quality participant. We think about a quality participant, it's really someone that's engaging, that's participating at events, they're fundraising, but how do we do that? And that really starts with that clear expectation of that participant. So if we really want a participant to part, sign up and register, where do we start? And that really starts with us showing up for them before we expect them to show up for us. So many of us, you know, how can we expect a student or an organization to register and participate with our dance marathon if we've never supported them? Because if we show up for them, they're gonna end up showing up for us. So how do we make it really easy to do that? So think about throughout the year, whether you have an exec board meeting or you have an event coming up, how can we go participate at one of their events? We know that we have one of our fraternities and sororities that often register every year for us. How can we use one of our exec board meeting nights and go to their food night and show up to them? So thinking about the more that we could be present on campus at student organization events, at fraternity sorority events, and show that we're appreciating them, we can start seeing them to come to attend our events. So if we want a really quality participant, it really starts with that planning process. Because that really has to, before we even have a participant register, what is that experience after they register? So many times we have a participant register, we're tabling on campus, and we say, hey, sign up for this really cool event. We'll help you fundraise. Uh, we'll make sure you have the best experience and they don't hear from us. So what is that participant experience after they register? You know, what communication do they get on the resources for them to know how and why to fundraise? So if we're really wanting a participant to be a quality participant and to fundraise, how are we educating them on why they fundraise and the impact that that fundraising has at their local CMN hospital. So what resources can you create to ensure that your participant knows how to fundraise, how to use donor drive, how to leverage their community to participate throughout the year with Dance Marathon. But then if we're looking about after, the, after they register, what are those engagement opportunities with Dance Marathon after the participant registers? And then ultimately, if we have a participant that we want to attend and stay at our main event, how are we ensuring from the very beginning when they register for your, your dance marathon, they know about the experience. They know what's expected of them and what that experience is going to entail. When we gear up for, when we're gearing up for recruitment, and we're not gonna dive into this checklist, but one of the key things is really the pre-planning for the key to success of a for the participant. If we really want a participant to engage throughout the year, our ultimate goal is for them to say yes to all of these questions. So more often than not, a participant that doesn't fundraise and doesn't attend is because they don't know why or they don't know how to participate with your organization and they haven't been communicated with throughout the year. So this is a great checklist that you can use with your program uh, to be able to, I would encourage you to take your executive board and your leadership team through these questions and are you able to say yes to all of these? If your participant is able to say yes to all of these questions, they're gonna then end up being a really quality participant throughout the year. So if we're really wanting to um, build, those, build a large number of participants on our campus, we really need advocates and ambassadors for Dance Marathon beyond your executive board. So many of us, when was the last time that we actually attended an event or joined an organization because we saw a social media post or we saw a flyer on campus. It's really because we were invited. And someone said, hey, I want you to come be a part of this because ultimately the reason why people attend an event or sign up for something is because of someone else and that relationship they had and someone invited them. So how can we build relationships with key decision makers 
and clubs and organizations throughout the campus. So who are key decision makers? Those are often the president and philanthropy and service chairs of student orgs and clubs, and also the friends of your executive board and staff members. How can we sit down one-on-one -on -one with those leaders and walk them through the value of Dance Marathon, asking them, hey, how can we bring value to your club and organization? And really building that relationship with them because they're the ones within that club or that organization that's gonna be advocating for you throughout the year. So many times we hear, oh, the president hasn't responded or the service chair hasn't responded. So how do we leverage those really active and top fundraising participants, utilizing your data from the year before, saying, hey, we see these 10 individuals are really high quality fundraisers. How can we sit down with them for them to become advocates for, your, for our dance marathons in their own clubs and organizations? So many of you have probably heard presentations come into your room, uh, into your club or meeting, and they're telling you, hey, sign up for this or participate with this. C goes in one ear and out the other. But what happens is often is there's someone in that club that can advocate for you throughout the year to attend and sign up. So really building relationship with those key decision makers. After we have those key decision makers, how do we meet students where they are? So that's really being able to present during class and at large lectures, presenting during student organization meetings and fraternity sorority meetings, tabling on campus during strategic locations, and changing your location and time to meet when students are there on campus and tabling during campus events. Really, recruitment comes down to this. Are we having them join us or are we wanting them to join us? And so really having recruitment is gonna come down to meeting each student where they are and really being present so there's a clear opportunity for them to join and be a part of your campus movement. Creating an individualized experience is really important during recruitment. So recruitment approaches should look different for first, second, and third year participants. So your new participant, let's put us into a scenario that we're tabling on campus. So a new participant has no clue about your organization. They don't know who your CMN hospital is. They don't know why to fundraise. They don't know how to fundraise. They don't know how they could participate throughout the year. So when a new participant comes up, what is that experience that you're providing for them to clearly know how do they participate? Why should they participate? And what are those opportunities that they can engage in your organization throughout the year? And then what are those resources do they have to be a successful participant? And then for a returning participant, you know, how do we recognize them for their previous impact? You know, you see that they registered and they raised $100 last year. How do we say thank you so much for raising $100 last year? But we also want to share with you how we, how your fundraising made an impact at your local CMN hospital to really drive the purpose behind why we, why they should keep registering every year. How do you create an individualized experience for them through incentives to fundraise and also participate? And then ultimately, what's new about your dance marathon this year and why they should come back and why should they fundraise again? So if we think about recruitment, each individual should have a different individualized experience from your first year to your fourth year and utilizing your donor drive data to be able to have that individualized experience and knowing them as a person. They're not just another number. They're not just another uh, registered participant, but they're actually someone that's become an advocate and an ambassador for your program and for your local Seaman hospital. So next is how do we engage the team as a whole? So if we look at our teams that have registered over the years, they're really put into three different buckets. Your loyal teams are your teams that come back every year. They've participated for two plus years. They're fundraising every year. They have consistent recruitment. So how do we retain them and how do we grow that partnership? That's really being able to sit down with that organization and share with them their impact year over year, helping them as an organization understand what have they done for their local CMN hospital how we're appreciating them as a team coming back every year, but also how can we make sure that that team can grow also in their participant numbers. Your opportunity teams are often your organizations that either have decreased in fundraising or recruitment over the years or haven't returned. So how can we re-engage and re-establish that partnership and show them how can we show up for them so that they wanna eventually come back and participate with your org. Then our aspirational teams are brand new teams. They're student orgs that have never participated in your dance marathon program before. So how do we establish a new partnership with them so that they engage their members in their club organization to participate in dance marathon? So our next activity 
is we want to hear from you. Who are your loyal, who are your opportunity, and who are your aspirational teams on your campus? So using the antidote, uh, the annotate section. So drop in there, we'd love for you to type in who are your loyal teams in your program? Who are your opportunity? Who are groups that you want to return back to your dance marathon program, sign up again? And who are new teams that you love to participate? Yes, thanks, Michaela. If you're having trouble with it, so you have your sororities, okay. Greek life, definitely an opportunity. Who are some of those individual teams that you that you know of? You could drop them in the chat as well. Athletics. New students, absolutely. NPA, sports teams and clubs, sports. That's cool. The okay, the the Army fan section, Phi Mu, transfer students under aspirational. Awesome. So really use this to start getting your uh, your brain turning on who are these three groups. Next, we're going to be doing a breakout session for you to be able to dive into a little bit more on like what can be those strategies that you can take back to your campus and what are going to be your plans in order to engage these three different groups. Okay, get ready for breakouts. Um, I named this one with some of my favorite foods. So if anybody has suggestions for the next round or has strong feelings about one of the categories of foods, please let me know. I'm just interested in what, what kind of food and things people like. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed your time in your breakout and kind of got to talk a little bit more about the strategies behind you know the start of the participant journey. And now, after talking a little bit about recruitment, we're going to transition a little bit into year-round engagement and what that actually means. So really, to start off, I want to define what is year-round engagement. And it's really providing opportunities for students on your campus that add value to their college experience outside of Dance Marathon, the event. I think a lot of the time we think of Dance Marathon as this very circular, like, as you can see here that I definitely pulled from a DMLC presentation last year of, you know, we're going to invite them, we're going to get them to register, we're going to communicate a little bit, we'll get them to fundraise and we'll get them to the event and we'll thank them. And that is such a great system for our like organizations that are just starting out and may need to start with that, you know, circular getting that groove going throughout the year. But with your organizations, what's really great is that you can implement so much more because of the growth and where you're at as an organization in fundraising. So throughout the year, you will have opportunities to get people registered. You will have opportunities to communicate, but what are you doing as a part of that communication and getting people to fundraise to intertwine different events and activations outside of just Dance Marathon, the event, but seeing Dance Marathon as just one of the events throughout your organizational year. So as you can see, uh, it's kind of broken down here through stewardship, education, inspiration, fundraising, and recruitment. And I'm going to go into a little bit more of a definition of each of those. So like Kyle shared before, we want you to kind of think of the different activations in buckets. So when you're thinking of planning an event or when you're thinking of, you know, moving forward with different pushes throughout the year, really going back to these five essential pieces. And if an event is not fulfilling one of these like checklist boxes, really reimagining how you can implement something from one of these categories into your event to make it a little bit more successful and leverage your uh, participation and your participants into the future and get them more engaged and involved. So to start off, I'm, I thought I'd start with my favorite, um, which is inspiration. I know that there is a specific reason why you are all on this call tonight. I know that you had so many other amazing things that you could have probably been doing other than hearing from me, but uh, really you're here because something led you to be here. So it might be a person, it might be a moment, it might be some memories that you've created through Dance Marathon. And 
there's a reason that you want to advocate and why you want to be a part of this organization. And definitely that is a, a great way for you to activate your participants, new and old, to get engaged or re-engage with your organization. Next, hopefully you heard a little bit uh, more in depth from Kyle, but the bare minimum, I'll just slide through it, is establishing new advocates for your this generation fighting for the next, whether that's a new advocate, whether just starting out or it's a returning participant who needs a little bit more information to get them excited about Dance Marathon. Um, next, I wanna talk about education. So really thinking back to what Kyle said of, there are going to be participants that have no idea what they're fundraising for. And there are going to be participants that have a little bit of an idea of what they're fundraising for, but definitely are not even scratching the surface. I have been involved with Dance Marathon for like almost six years now. And I am consistently learning something new about all of the amazing things that our hospitals provide every single day in my role. So I can only imagine what you can teach uh, the different participants at different levels about your organization and all of the amazing things that are happening in, within Children's Miracle Network, but then also within your specific hospital. Next, uh, just to touch a little bit on fundraising, it's so much more than ask, getting people to ask their friends and family for money, which you all know, and you're probably all well-versed in, you know, that $5 that you're asking, you know, your best friend for as a part of a, I think I had the graphic, uh, as a part of a um, bingo board, doesn't, isn't just $5 and it ends there. That $5 could provide a meal for a family that is in the hospital. That $5 could go toward, you know, the equipment or the research that allows for our kiddos at our hospitals to have the best first class care possible. Fundraising isn't just the extension of asking for that money, it is asking for, to support a movement and for your uh, participants to ask their friends and family to support what they're passionate about and what they believe in. Next, and our last thing is stewardship. And once again, like Kyle said, it's showing up for the people that show up for you. Um, it can be as simple as saying thank you and you know, reaching out to participants as they're hitting fundraising levels. It can be as simple as you see someone walking on campus and just saying, hey, I like your t-shirt when they're wearing a dance marathon t-shirt. Something to allow for people to know that they are an individual within your organization that you value and that you are excited for them to be a part of what you are trying to establish and create on your campus. So these are just kind of like the definitions and Kayla will go into what that actually means for like year round engagement or activation, but these are just the different ways that you can create checkpoints throughout the year to make sure that you are advocating for your, you know, full fundraising year. It's not from getting point A of getting someone registered to getting someone to the event. It's creating a roadmap for someone to take the path to be able to get inspired, get their friends to join the organization, learn more about why they're a part of this organization, get people to fundraise with them. And, you know, at the end of the day, saying thank you to the people that, you know, might be on a call with you on a Tuesday night. And I'm saying thank you so much for being here. Um, and really just building up this movement that is you already know is amazing on your campus. Next, I want to just say that what, with whatever you do, communication is key. And communication means so much more than just communicating, you know, oh, we're having a fundraising event or, you know, we're having X, Y, Z thing happen, you know, maybe tomorrow. It's what are you doing to prepare your organization and your participants to know what is going on weeks from today, weeks from now. And knowing that like any communication that you are doing could probably happen earlier. And if you don't get anything out of what I have said tonight, it's just communication is key. And there are so many different ways that you can communicate to people and be notified when you need to be communicating. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of outline them a little bit right now. So much like recruitment, communication can be segmented as well. So 
thinking about the participant journey and you know those first year participants versus a fourth year participant when you know they're registering it's a lot it should look a lot different the same way when you're communicating with them and i have an example of how you know the generic content that dance marathon as an organization produces uh is specific but when you're having these events throughout the year and activations throughout the year you know how are you making sure that every person feels that when they are getting an email from you it was meant specifically for them it's not dear participant it's dear Michaela or hey Michaela great to talk with you today like creating those moments where people are like oh they like put the effort in to know that I'm a part of this organization um and know it's available to you I, I'm not saying that you need to like text every single participant individually every time something's going on but know that you know you can utilize donor drive and you can utilize trigger notifications and scheduled messages and if you're not quite sure how to do that your cause partnership managers can help provide materials and resources and probably even walk through how to activate those different things within donor drive i specifically say trigger notifications and scheduled messages because those are just like already templated and available to you you don't have to create specific reports to be able to do it you can just select the different modifications that you want for the different communications for different groups and you're well on your way to creating this personalized communication. There are also opportunities for you to use resources like mobile cause to send out individualized text messages or you know do those texts to register text to donate and set those up with your cause partnership manager and that's just another method of communication. Next you have the opportunity to use internal university communication platforms. There are probably different specific ones for your university, but I think of like, you know, those portals that you can put things on the calendar. Are you putting all of your events on those calendars throughout the year? Are you taking time to, you know, put up flyers? I know that it's like, you know, sometimes an afterthought, but Flyers can be really beneficial and it's like that first piece of someone, you know, stopping and taking a moment to really understand what your event could be. And then are there other opportunities for different unique communication? So are you utilizing, you know, the space below your feet? Are you going out and chalking on your campus? Are you going out and making sure that every way that you can communicate with different individuals, you are going out in doing. And this is outside of, I think, uh, the traditional, oh, we put it on social media, like people have to come. I think we can realize that social media is a really great, like, outlet for us to be able to get the information out, but realize that it's a bubble and that a lot of the communication that we can have externally can be found in all of the resources that I shared on this slide. So this is kind of an example of like segmenting the communication. So as you can see, I have two different emails that are templated for all of our dance marathons. So you can see this first email is saying, you know, how does Dance Marathon help your local Children's Miracle Network Hospital? You just joined the most passionate and giving community. And me receiving that as a first year participant is, wow, like this is so much great information. I would never want to receive this email as like a second, third, or fourth because I'm like, I'm a part of this movement. But if you go to the next, you can see, welcome back. By registering for another year of Dance Marathon, we know your commitment is stronger than ever. Thank you for championing kids' health. And so these are just like the templated things that are already available on uh, Donor Drive. But when you are thinking about creating communication for pre uh, during and post event, can you segment communication like you see here? And then um, just so you know that they're available to you, there are so many different ways for you to set up trigger notifications. And once again, if you don't know how to do that, definitely reach out to your cost partnership manager. But the example that I have on here is notifying an admin every time someone gets to a thousand dollars fundraised. And this notification will then go to any person that is on the executive board that has the admin side of 
uh, donor drive and you can say, I want you to include their first name, last name and mobile phone number. This is a really easy way for you to get that information quickly and then send out a text message to that person and say like, oh my gosh, we just got the notification that you paid a thousand dollars. That's so awesome. And knowing that that's something tangible that you can do and it's so much more incremental along the way because you're not having to, you know, pull a report and there's like 20 people on it already and you're having to do it all at once. But how can you do it to do things real time for your participants to make sure that you're getting, you know, things that are proactive like scheduled messages, but also then reactive when someone hits, you know, a fundraising milestone. Maybe it's when someone registers and all of those awesome things. Next, I'm just going to talk a little bit more uh, building off of what Kyle has already shared with team engagement. So really thinking about past, you know, you're getting them registered, you're getting them excited, you're getting them activated at the beginning of the year, you're getting teams signed up, but then what? And I think Kyle did a really great job of sharing how this partnership can be built, but then what next? I think when I think about it, it's creating that inclusive environment for a beneficial relationship. Is it you going out to their social media and commenting on their posts or is it creating events with them? Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to get this reference, but I put it on here because it's one of my favorite movies. Um, it is Bring It On Again. Bring It On Again is my favorite Bring It On movie, but if you are unfamiliar with the story of Bring It On Again, um, it's the renegade, which is the top, and then the stingers, I want to say is the team name, I should look that up. Um, and really the stingers see themselves as this, you know, unifying great organization on their cheer squad on their campus. But in reality, they're so closed off from the rest of campus. And a lot of people feel that there is not a partnership and there's not, you know, they're not supporting all of these organizations on campus where with the Renegades, they are that inclusive organization and they are supporting all of the organizations on campus. And the one that supported all the uh, organizations on campus won. So thinking about like, how can we make sure that everything that we are doing is inclusive to everyone on our campus and not just saying, oh, we're this unifying organization, but really putting your money where your mouth is and coming up with different tangible things for you to be able to do to support different organizations on your campus. A really easy way to do that is giving people tools for success within fundraising. And you can see from my friends from West Virginia, I pulled, they do specific bingo boards for uh, different organizations that are higher up in fundraising on their campus. Organizations that they know will come back, that will be top fundraisers. They give them specific tools for success. They share different opportunities that are available specifically to those organizations throughout the year. And maybe it's implementing something like a Greek week with uh, you know, our Greek chapters or partnering on different events throughout the year and really utilizing the relationships that you have built to make sure that as you are going throughout the year, there are different checkpoints for them and for your teams as well as individuals. Um, and then I think a really simple way that we always kind of think, stop, forget to stop and think about is listening to needs of like what people want from these teams. It's really easy for us to like go out and say, okay, this is exactly X, Y, Z thing that we need to get done and to accomplish. But really at the end of the day, it's whatever the team needs because they're your stakeholders and they're the ones that are going to be going out and fundraising for you and being advocates for you. Um, and then another really easy way for team engagement throughout the year is creating incentives. I think that, um, you know, like I said before, it can be as simple as like a social media shout out or, you know, maybe it's time with Miracle Kiddos and it's time for inspiration that's specifically geared towards specific teams and thinking about all of our five buckets of like, different ways to incentivize, if it's different education for specific teams, but really thinking about how can we make things more individualized for specific teams outside of just like, oh, this is what everyone gets. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of what year-round engagement kind of 
looks like on the abstract. Um, and then really whatever you do, it's 90% of the you know, clear communication that you have with your internal team, transparency to everyone that's involved and laying the groundwork to be successful. And then honestly, at the end of the day, those events that you're having, everything that's going on throughout the year is 10%. It's just the execution. And it's really important to make sure that you are building all of the things that you are doing up to be successful rather than just saying, well, oh, next week we're gonna have you know, this event and we're gonna let everyone know this week because we just got everything finalized, but how can we make sure that we're building our events now so that we can be successful in creating internal order, making sure that everyone is on the same page and creating that communication and transparency. With that, I think we are going to be heading into a breakout to talk a little bit more about um, the ideas that we just shared and Amber will be dropping that with the questions in the chat. I think Kayla's going to chat soon about events and activation, but before she does that, if um, there's a couple people that want to share something that they learned or talked about in their breakout room, we'd love to hear it. Anybody? Miracle Good Talent Show breakout room. I feel like you all probably had some good conversation. Something I loved that was shared in my breakout room was the Huskathon has a roadmap for every week. They have a task that first time participants can do. So they feel like they're doing something for Dance Marathon every week as opposed to when they register and then nothing until the event. Love, Love that. It. That was Huskerthon? I believe so. Okay, please share it in the Slack channel. Or, yeah, Slack channel. The established program Slack channel, please. We'd love to see examples of that roadmap. Sweet. Well, don't want to force you all to share. So I'll pass it off to Kayla. Perfect. Okay. I, I mean, if we were running a mile tonight, this would be the fourth and final lap. We are to the point of the execution and activation of our events. So uh, excited to kind of dive into some of this. Uh, so I know we've gone through goal setting, recruitment, year round engagement, and now it's looking at what does that look like when we do actually start thinking about these events that are happening throughout the entire year um, that lead up to our big event at the end of the year. Um, so it should be very intentional. So as you are planning these events, making sure that you incorporate all five of these pieces that Michaela had talked about earlier on in this presentation. We want our participants to feel special and not feeling like they're just a piece of that fundraising number, that they are a big uh, part of why that number goes up at the end of the year, but knowing that um, we care about them as people also. So thinking through what your program already does, you might have a few of these ideas that are listed out on there. Um, this is something that I would take the time with your team this year to really sit down and think about what are these five areas for us and what do we like currently do and what could we start doing? Um, so when you think of inspiration, that's really thinking about your why um, and touching on, do we have certain areas of the hospital that we support? Uh, are there stories that we share every single time? Um, recruitment, thinking through your tabling, your incentives, what are those personalized messages like Kyle was walking through earlier uh, to make it special and not just a mass communication that is sent to everyone. Uh, thinking through education, uh, what does that look like to talk about what Dance Marathon is and who we are as a network? Uh, sometimes it's easy to forget like we're a part of 400 Dance Marathons um, and not just one organization on the campus. Uh, and then thinking through fundraising at all of your events, do we have some type of fundraising implement implemented into our event? Uh, and then stewardship. So do we thank everyone who's participated, everyone who's fundraised? So when you're looking at all five of these and your events throughout the year, this should be your goal is to try and have a piece of this in everything that you do. So that when someone does see a dance marathon event on campus, they know that they can see each of these areas. Um, and we can hop to the next slide. 
Uh, so when, what does this look like now? So thinking about if you're doing kickoff events, engagement weeks, miracle weeks, things like that, that are going to happen throughout the year. Uh, I think those are a little bit easier to kind of understand how all these pieces fall into that. Um, so leading up to your event, uh, do we prep our participants? So are we sending out communication well in advance or is it happening like the day before? Do we expect people to have those on their calendars? Uh, do we send out a save the date to prep them of what's to come and uh, tell them why that they should be there? Uh, so the more that you can get these things out on a calendar or letting uh, everyone know what's going on, the better. Uh, and when we send out our message, is it intentional? Do we have it segmented? We walked through each of those of how we can really break that apart. Donor Drive has some great options of how you can even set your own team up to not even have to do the work to dive into some of those reports. You'll get an automatic email that sends you everything that you need to know. Um, even leading up to these events, oops, sorry, I'm just <laughs> slow talker, uh, thinking about like your fundraising level. So when you send out messages, um, do we show them that we know that, you know, they've already raised X amount of dollars or uh, is it a participant who hasn't raised anything at all and that we should probably send a little more specialized message that says, here's ways to get started. Here's ways that uh, we can help you as you, you know, make your first ask. Uh, so a participant who has been involved in Dance Marathon also would probably receive a different message than someone who's a first year participant uh, who maybe needs to know a little bit more about our cause and what's going on. Um, and thinking about alumni, do we have specialized communication for our alumni? Sometimes forgotten, but those are the ones that we should probably be reaching out to because they were connected to our cause and now have the jobs to give back to that organization that they loved when they were on, on campus. So thinking through some of those things, making sure that they're very special when you do send those messages to them. Uh, thinking about a different experience for every single push. Uh, we'll touch on this a little bit more on the next slide and like how you can really do that every single event. Uh, but when you look at your events throughout the year, it should be an experience and not something that people are just attending and leaving quickly. How can we keep them there and keep them engaged? Um, there should be a streamlined check-in process even, which we'll talk a little bit more to in just a second. Uh, but essentially once they get to your event, what is their pathway when they get there? Uh, it should look a little different for someone who might not even be registered yet. Let's get them to a table that we get them set up and get rolling um, with Dance Marathon. And then thinking of post-event, do we reach out and stay connected? Or do we just kind of wait until the big event to have those follow-up emails? Uh, the more you can incorporate that in throughout the year to show like, hey, thanks for attending. Thanks for, uh, you know, stopping at the recruitment table or the fundraising table to get more people uh, and then know that we do know who attended and can be a little more specialized in that area. Uh, next slide. We're gonna dive in to how we can make every single event a little bit different. Um, so going along the lines of making it more of an experience, when we get to check-in, we should have all of the information about a participant already pulled up. So do we have that on hand so that when someone walks up and says who they are, we know if they are registered or not. So if they're not registered, we should send them in the direction to get started. If they are already registered, like let's send them to the fundraising table if they haven't started fundraising. So having all of that knowledge when someone stops at your table is a great way to show like, you know, we want to get you to the next step and here's how we're going to do it. Um, and just, again, it goes back to that piece of not making them feel like they're a number in your organization, but someone that you truly want to see them do the best that they can and have a family uh, with Dance Marathon. The same for if it's their first event, it would be great to have some of those uh, stats at your event so that right when they get there and check in, you can tell if they've been there or not, or if this is going to be a new experience for them. Uh, another piece in there too is thinking through, like, is there an item that maybe they collect at every event throughout the year that once they attend each of these events, they're collecting buttons or stickers or Maybe there's some staple on campus that you can tie into every single event that leads up to the big event uh, towards an exclusive merch item, something that you can draw people in through everything throughout the year and tell them like it is a year long movement and not just our big event. So the more you can shift that to be an experience all year uh, makes them, you know, leads up to that big event moment. And so just keeping that in mind as uh, those five events are rolled into each of your events. And I think we're going to have a poll here next.
Okay, uh, it looks like it's spread across. Uh, exciting to see the different areas um, and recruitment being such a large piece. So excited to see how you all activate on that this year. Awesome. Cool, so this next breakout, uh, we are gonna be breaking up into these five areas. Um, and your goal is to plan an event or activity around campus that activates the focus area you were given. So thinking through like, what does your audience look like? Uh, what is the goal of the event you're planning? What's your strategy of communication? Uh, so let's work it up. Okay. Um, so now we're going to share out and when you all did your little poll, I'm not, I don't remember if the results were shared with you all, but um, recruitment, fundraising, and stewardship were the top three areas that you all saw for opportunity for your programs or, or for your program. And so would just love for the recruitment group, the stewardship group, and the fundraising group to just briefly share out um, kind of what your overall plan was. You don't necessarily need to go into detail with communication and all that, but would just love to know kind of what your, what you're thinking your plan is for your activation. I was from the uh, stewardship group. Um, I can introduce myself quick too. Um, my name is Allie. I'm the overall coordinator at State at South Dakota State. And um, so we had stewardship and our event that we planned was a kind of post main like dance marathon event geared towards our fourth year participants that we're gonna see. And, and then kind of pushing them a little towards our, if, if your program has like an alumni type of program. So pushing them to join and kind of stay within our organization past when they leave our university. So that's kind of our plan we came up with. I love it, Allie. Thank you. Let's make it happen this year. I also love that because that's what a lot of um, universities do for their like alumni. I don't know if well, none of you are graduated, obviously, but when you do graduate, your alumni um, office, office before graduation might host like a little, hey, welcome to the alumni office thing. So I love that. We're next groups, fundraising and recruitment. I can go for fundraising. Uh, my name is Milad. I'm the executive director at Miracle at KSU, and I kind of stole an event we did in the past pre-COVID, uh, but a well, a good fundraising opportunity we had was on President's Day, we had a Pi of Prez PR. Um, so basically, we emailed a bunch of different organizations uh, and asked their presidents and if they would be willing to come to our PR. We were out there for about like four hours that day so they could stop in and just volunteer to be Pied. By doing so, uh, we brought out a lot of people from their chapters that like we wouldn't have normally saw. Uh, out there. So uh, we try to open up a 50% off code for different like Greek life chapters as well that day uh, to kind of register a few people. But we were also able to raise a lot more money because again, there's a lot of people that normally wouldn't come to like a miracle event, but since their president was willing to be pied in the face, uh, they came running. So that was our idea for fundraising. Love it. Okay. Can I ask, would it be real pie or would it be whipped cream? Because I have strong feelings about just choosing whipped cream. Yeah, we just did whipped cream. Okay. It, it was way easier and more cost effective. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm going to see a program actually take like a banana cream pie and just throw it in someone's face. <laughs> um, okay, that was fundraising recruitment. What y'all got? Um, I can share for recruitment. Um, so we basically started out planning um, internally what we would do. So getting um, different parts of the board involved um, with different positions on how we're going to execute the week of re our recruitment. And our recruitment plan was basically targeted towards new dancers and freshmen. Um, so with that, we just made sure that everyone knew their goal and their position on getting this week to be successful. Um, and then after that, during the week, we were making sure that we were maintaining goals and um, tracking successes and failures, which hopefully we had none. Um, but after that week, um, we want to be 
serious about making sure that we're still connecting with the dancers that registered by connecting them with team captains from the jump, um, hosting informational sessions, fundraising, or sending out fundraising survival guides, um, and then also um, having events for dancers to participate in right off the bat. So they're engaged as soon as they register, but also throughout the year so we don't lose engagement. Perfect, thank you. You all have a really extensive plan. Um, hope to see some of you all maybe implement that this year even. Okay, Michaela, we can go to the next slide. Okay, the time you've all been waiting for. We're not done yet, but would love for y'all to take a few minutes, fill out this survey. We'll just, like, literally it will take like 30 seconds, a minute tops, um, and let you all fill out the survey really quick. And then we're going to dive, we're going to wrap up with um, some, some kind of what's next stuff, and then an opportunity to ask any questions you all have. Um, all of us hosting this will stay on or you have questions for other people that can happen then too and i don't have any music right now available on my computer to like play during this moment also the first person that's done with the survey just put it in the chat because i just want to know you don't have to say your name oh can you put the survey link here oh yeah that would be smart we can do that DJ Michaela, I'm wondering if we can get your mom's playlist when she's a DJ your age. I hope so. Maybe. Probably a lot of ACDC. Do you guys like the song? Salesman's like, what up? What's your budget? And I'm like, honestly, I don't know nothing about mopeds. He said, I got the one for you. Follow me. Ooh. Everyone should include this in their world dance. I don't need a windshield. Banana seat, I can't be on two wheels. 800 cash, that's a hell of a deal. I'm headed downtown. Now that Michaela said this, I'm now I'm what are the odds of how many programs are gonna have this in their brow dance this year? I literally will come. Send it to me, send it to your cross version manager. I'll learn it. Yeah, I feel like we're good. We got the first person done. You can continue filling it out while we're chatting. Um, also, okay, yeah, reminder, join us on Slack, please, because I just looked at the Slack channel. It's kind of depressing. There's only 18 people in it, and I think like 10 of them are the CMN staff members. So please join. We're going to share um, a bunch of resources. We have a resource about those, you know, loyal, inspirational, aspirational loyal opportunity aspirational teams um, with you and some great other resources. So please join that Slack channel. We'll be posting that in there. Link for the Slack channel. Yes, you can. Um, I bet Bradley will send that because he's really quick. Um, and yeah, please join us on Slack. Also connect with your cause partnership manager to set up your donor drive. If you haven't already worked to get that set up, you can implement a lot of these um, things we talked about with communication, all of that in there. I mentioned we have resources coming in the Slack channel. If you all are in there, you'll see them. And upcoming meetings. So this is the last collaboration meeting before DMLC weekend. So that's really exciting. Um, so we have DMLC weekend coming up on the weekend of July 17th. A lot of great stuff happening. And then after that, um, we'll have a collaboration meeting in August for Child Health Day. So be on the lookout for that. Some of you should have already registered with your registration for DMLC. Um, reminder that hackathon submissions are open until the 30th of June. So all of you came up with really great ideas just now to plan different events and activations on your campus. I'm sure you can come up with the really good ideas for hackathon submissions too on what you want to innovate and what you want Seaman hospitals to potentially um, take on. So next slide. Oh awkward the survey again oh poll yes let's do our last poll who's gonna get it first oh i think oh bradley he's on it did you learn something that will help you change kids health and change the future wow everyone's saying yes i know you all can't necessarily see it i don't think you can but y'all are saying yes i love it okay well um Thank you all so much. If you want to go to the next slide, we'll be here to answer any questions you have. Um, feel free to unmute. 
but um, thank you all for coming. That concludes the kind of, you know, formal presentation, if you will, but please, if you have any questions, let us know. <laughs>